In this video, we'll go through an, a quiz three example. And in this case, I'm going to use Merck. So we'll calculate the weight average cost of capital for Merck, a pharmaceutical company. So let's start with the cost of debt for Merck. So the cost of debt equals the risk-free rate plus a spread. So the risk-free rate we're going to use, we notice that their bonds have an average maturity of five years. So we're going to go down and look at our choices of interest rates and we notice that the five-year treasury is currently at 3%, so our risk-free rate will be 0 0.03. And then we need a spread. For the spread, we'll go down and look and we'll see what we have in this table. Again, it's a five-year average bond and we notice in the information given that these bonds on average are rated A+. Plus. So we'll go across the column for A+, plus and we'll notice that they have a spread of 75 basis points. So we'll add 75 basis points, which is 75 divided by 10,000. That will equal 0 0.03 plus 0 0.0075. That equals 0 0.0375. So we've got the cost of debt. Now we need the cost of equity. In doing the cost of equity, we have a few things to consider in, in coming up with the beta. So remember, there's four things to discover in coming up with beta. Number one is revenue sensitivity. This is a pharmaceutical. It's in healthcare. I'm going to say healthcare is somewhat of a staple. That is, consumers, consumers are going to spend on health care no matter uh, what the economy is doing. It's a, it's a required purchase. And so in that case, since pharmaceuticals for pills, people are probably going to continue buying their pills even in a recession. So I'm gonna, that's going to recommend a beta less than one, but not necessarily materially less than one because there are aspects of the health care system that people can cut back on. There are some optional medicines and people can delay purchases. But generally, healthcare tends to be a below one beta revenue-wise. But just think through how would how would this company perform in a recession? Would its revenues fall about average versus the average company in the in the stock market fall more than average or far less fall less than average? In this case, since it's healthcare, a product people will will buy no matter what the economy is doing. I'm going to say that their revenues probably will not be hurt as much as the average company in a recession. The second thing we're going to look at is operating leverage. And in this case, I just give you the information because operating leverage, remember, is a measure of how much fixed cost is in their structure. In this case, we say that they're slanted more toward fixed costs than the average company S&P, which makes sense because as a pharmaceutical, they have a high research and development cost, and that's an ongoing cost. So that implies a greater than one, but you notice the word I use slanted more, so it's not excessively, but it is higher than the average companies, so slightly higher than, than one. The third thing is the financial leverage. So operating leverage greater than one due to higher fixed cost. And the financial leverage we notice that their debt to equity comparing to the average company their debt to equity is well below that of stocks in the S&P 500 and so because of that we're going to say that beta is definitely below one due to much lower debt so the general sense is number one below one say not materially below one but definitely below one so in the point point eight to one range number two slants it a little bit higher than that so if instead of being point eight maybe that makes it point eight five or instead of being point nine makes it point nine five but it raises it up a little bit but then the financial leverage probably overwhelms the operating leverage because of their very very low debt so that's going to push it back down so i'm thinking something below one maybe in the 0.8 to 1 range, but let's look at the historical graph and see what we see there. And here's Merck's beta. Historically, you can see it's been all over the place. 
it spent a lot of time between 0.9 and 1.1 which I think is a normal range then we had some really strange markets with um, all that happened in with the dot-com bust and everything else going on and probably what you're seeing here is uh, Merck because it was not a technology company just fared very very well during this time um, I'm looking at bouncing all around you could probably argue something in the 0.8 range if you wanted to say it's historical median has been 0.9 but more recently it's been lower than that my gut tells me 0.9 is a pretty good assumption I would be comfortable with 0.8 or 0.9 but definitely looking at charts something below 1 seems to make sense given that the median is below 1 and the bulk of the recent history is below 1 but again it's a subjective but I'm gonna go with a beta based on history When I put it all together, I'm going to go with a beta of 0.9. So with a beta of 0.9, what does that tell me the cost of equity is? KE is going to equal the risk-free rate. So for stocks, the risk-free rate we use is the 10-year treasury, which here is 4%. So 0 0.04 plus the beta that I'm using a 0.9 times the market risk premium that's given. The equity risk premium is 4% times 0 0.04. And so when I do all of that, it's going to give me a cost of equity of 0 0.076. All right. So before we calculate the weight average cost of capital, let's get the weights. The weight for D for debt is going to be the amount in debt, 18 billion divided by the amount in debt and an equity which is 18 billion plus 54 billion dollars so 18 billion dollars of their capital structure their total capital structure is 72 billion so 18 billion over 18 plus 54 billion that equals 25 percent the weight of equity is going to equal 54 billion over 18 plus 54 billion and obviously that has to equal the, the residual, 75%, so these two add up to 100%. So now we have everything we need. The cost of capital for Merck equals the cost of debt. All right, let me, let me do it in order. The weight of debt times the cost of debt times one minus the marginal tax rate plus the weight of equity times the cost of equity. So in this case, the weight of debt is 25%. The cost of debt that we've calculated up here, 0 0.0375 times 1 minus the tax rate. The tax rate is given in the problem. Their tax rate is 35% and it is the marginal tax rate. So minus 0.35 plus the weight of equity that we just calculated, 0.75 times the cost of equity. Our cost of equity, remember, was 0 0.076. And when you calculate that all, all out, you get a cost of capital of 6.31%. That's your answer. So the formulas that you need is the cost of debt, the risk-free rate plus the spread, the cost of equity, which is the risk-free rate plus beta times the equity risk premium, and then you need the, the formula for the cost of capital, the weight of debt times the cost of debt times 1 minus the tax rate. Make sure you put that in parentheses. Plus the weight of equity times the cost of equity. And then to get the cost of equity, the most difficult part is at figuring out the beta, which is a, a forecast. Remember, so it's somewhat subjective. We looked at Merck's revenue sensitivity and decided because it's healthcare, it was somewhat of a staple, so less than one. It had higher operating leverage because of its um, research and development costs, so that pushed it a little bit above one. It had significantly lower operating uh, financial leverage, the lower financial level leverage should have pushed it below one. And then history suggested something definitely below one, uh, probably somewhere in the range of 0.8 to 0.9. I chose to use 0.9, and that's what we plugged in. So those are all the pieces to this quiz. Thanks.